All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Joshua Lock. I'm a, a senior principal engineer in Verizon's open source program office. Um, my upstream work is focused around software supply chain integrity, where I work in several CNCF and OpenSSF projects. But I'm here to talk to you a day, today about the update framework, or TUF. Um, and yeah, in a prior life, I've kind of worked on open source Linux distribution build tools. So I'm a big fan of kind of rigor and determinism in software engineering. That's what brought me into this line of work. I'm here with my uh, friend and colleague, Lucas. Hi there. Uh, my name is Lucas. I'm a research engineer at the um, New York University Secure Systems Lab, where, oh, thanks, where I've been working on software supply chain security projects for the past couple of years. Um, that includes Intoto and TUF, both projects in the CNCF. And yeah, back to Joshua. Thanks. Yeah, so today we're just going to take a look behind the scenes of uh, the Tough project, talk a bit about the organization and some of the things we're doing, and uh, some avenues for contribution, hope tr hoping to attract some new contributors to the project today. So this is our, uh, our agenda. We're going to have a really high level overview of software supply chain security and how Tough kind of fits into that model. We're going to look at what the Tough project is kind of made up of. Talk about some of the recent work um, we've been doing and how that's enabling TUF to be used in more places uh, and indicate some of the places that that, uh, that work is happening effectively. Um, so I'll, I'll hand back to Lucas to talk about the 101. Yeah, so TUF, short for the update framework, is a software supply chain security project. Um, we won't go into details about how it works, but uh, still briefly talk about the software supply chain and how TUF protects it, just to get everyone on the same page. Um, you'll hear many different definitions of the software supply chain. Um, also here at the event, one definition I like is that the software supply chain is uh, the series of steps from inception of a software project to the delivery of the resulting pro product. It's a very generic definition. Um, what the software supply chain also is, is an attractive target for attackers. Um, for one simple reason, attackers can maximize their impact. A single compromise uh, affects millions of end users or clients. Um, it's also attractive for attackers to attack the supply chain because it has such a, such a big attack surface. Um, modern software supply chain or modern software products have many, many dependencies and are really supply chains of supply chains. And one more reason uh, why there, there have been so many software supply chain attacks recently is that, or for a long time, is that it has been, the security of the supply chain has been neglected for a long time, um, but this is getting better. Um, tough is located at the last mile of the supply chain where the content ends up in a repository or in a container registry and is then fetched by a client for installation or deployment. So TUF protects that process. More specifically, um, TUF protects integrity, consistency and freshness of content and it does so by using cryptographic signature. Um, this is nothing special. Most um, tools that protect something use cryptographic signatures to do so. Um, TUF can do more than that. It um, allows you to delegate trust at scale. As I mentioned before, um, modern software is composed of many components uh, owned by different entities. So you really want to be able to delegate trust at scale so that a client who um, trusts the owner of Foo doesn't also have to trust the owner of Bar and vice versa. And this separation of trust also allows you to re reduce the uh, impact of a compromise. Uh, so if the cryptographic keys for Foo um, have been stolen, um, Bar might, may still be fine. Um, another feature that is like um, very uh, defining for TUF is that it allows in-band recovery um, and yeah, that just works without the user um, having to know, having to look at revocation lists or anything. This works transparently. Um, as promised, this was a very overview style uh, primer on how TUF works and today we want to focus more on what TUF is.
Thank you to Joshua. Thank you. Yeah, so Tough is a community project. It's an open source project. Um, it originated in some peer-reviewed academic research, identifying flaws in popular Linux package managers. Um, the core techniques were kind of uh, developed in collaboration with Tor or the Onion Router to provide an application updater for that piece of software, which is focused on privacy and security is uh, tantamount within that ecosystem. So. Um, that was some of the early work that led to Tuff. Uh, Tuff was effectively a generalization of the techniques developed for Tor, uh, so that any software system uh, with a repository and clients could um, integrate this, this functionality. Um, and over the years, it was um, enhanced with several research papers to adapt to community-style content repositories. But the, the key point here is that this was really, from the very early days, uh, like a collabor collaboration between academia and uh, practitioners. Uh, with a very strong bias towards open source ecosystems, with Tor and PyPI being prominent examples. Um, but uh, Tuff and its concepts have been very widely uh, adopted and adapted uh, for multiple use cases. Um, it's on automobiles uh, via the Uptime project, it's on IoT devices via the foundries.io team, uh, smart devices through Google's Fuchsia OS, uh, cloud infrastructure through AWS Bottle Rocket. Um, ecosystem package managers and so on and so on. Um, the core of the project is uh, these three kind of symbiotic um, things. The, they're each distinct Git repositories, but we have a specification which uh, describes um, the processes and procedures for um, achieving this secure client to repository um, update process. Um, there's, a particular focus on the detailed client workflow, which is very uh, well defined. Uh, we have a, a KEPS or PEP style uh, augmentation process where we can propose and peer review possible additions to the specification. And then we have a reference implementation, which is an exemplary uh, input implementation uh, demonstrating how to how to implement Tuff and the primitives and procedures within the specification in practice. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but these three projects have a very symbiotic relationship. They all feed into each other. Um, there are other implementations of Tuff, the specification, several of which are open source, um, but not all of them have this uh, same kind of interactive nature. Uh, and then the other thing that Tuff is, is it's a small group of um, friendly, uh, diverse, professional, and considerate folks from academia and industry, um, and very welcoming to new contributors. Uh, and so that's tough, the community, and I'm going to hand back over to Lucas to describe some of the things the community is working on. Thanks. So uh, Joshua has sh uh, shown us uh, that TAF um, is widely used and adopted, which suggests some um, maturity to some extent. Um, Another data point for this is that Tuff became one of the first, or became the first security project to reach the graduation status in the CNCF. Um, so Tuff has been around for a long time and is in a good shape, but that doesn't mean that Tuff is done. So Tuff is a very much living project. Uh, there are plenty of avenues where Tuff continues to improve, or in other words, where you or <laughs> Um, interested people can help to improve Tuff. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna walk you through some of those areas. Um, so one big part of Tuff is its specification. And um, everyone who had, uh, has had the pleasure to read the specification will agree with me that it is not immediately obvious what, um, <laughs> what it, um, how everything works, so it's uh, fairly complex. Um, that means that clarifying the specification remains an ongoing effort for us. Uh, we're trying to revise the terminology, revise the routines. Um, yeah, we have. I have uh, listed a couple of GitHub issues there uh, where we are trying to make this easier to grasp. One reason why the tough specification is challenging is that it leaves many complex decisions up to the adopter. And this is actually a deliberate design decision and is what makes tough so versatile and um, useful for uh, many 
setups that try to protect content. Um, on our wish list is something like secondary literature with detailed deployment uh, recommendations for uh, different use cases. Um, and also uh, where we can explain the rationale between, uh, behind certain properties uh, of TUF in more detail. Um, other efforts include defining a mathematical model for the server and the client parts of TUF um, and using formal methods to prove the security properties of TUF. Um, this is also something that no one has ever done, but uh, a lot of people would be interested in. And um, in addition to those general improvements are, um, uh, is something that's called TAP development. Uh, Joshua already talked about this TAP process. Um, this includes design, discussions, uh, technical writing, um, implementing proof of concepts for the ideas in, in the tabs, uh, conducting security reviews, uh, integrating it with the specification once the tabs uh, have been accepted uh, and then adopting it in the tough implementations. Uh, some ongoing efforts, some ongoing tabs that uh, we've been working on recently include um, signing with six store identities, optimizing metadata sizes in TUF um, and using different mechanisms uh, of key re revocation, for instance. Um, next, um, so as I said, TUF is not done yet. This includes the TUF implementation. Um, I'm talking about the reference impl implementation mostly because that's what I maintain. Um, we're constantly improving uh, user experience, de developer experience. Um, we're trying to add new um, abstraction layers to make building tough applications easier. Uh, we're adding new features, providing new signing mechanisms, and so on. Uh, we're adopting the tabs that I talked about earlier. Um, and adopting tabs in the implementation also feeds back into the tab process, into the designs. Um, and then, Joshua has already mentioned this, there are other implementations than the Python TUF reference implementation. We have recently added uh, TUF.js to our organization. There is a new to uh, Go TUF implementation, um, and they all have their own uh, roadmaps where people can um, engage and help. Um, yeah, and having all those different implementations also calls for interoperability and conformance testing, which is something we could really uh, need help with. So there are uh, plenty of things um, everyone can, can do to uh, help make tough implementations even stronger. And I haven't even talked about uh, things that are built on top of those implementations. So um, the implementations or in my specific case, the reference implementation uh, provide very strong foundations to build applications on top. And um, some of, of the applications that also people from the to core TUF team have been working on are uh, listed here. They all um, deal more with the repos repository side of TUF. We will talk about that later. Uh, but first, um, yeah, we want to take a step back and um, see how we even got into a place where we can very easily and with a lot of fun uh, build applications on top of TUF. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a bit uh, now about Python TUF, which is the thing you've heard us refer to as the reference implementation. Um, last year, we completed a significant overhaul of this reference implementation. And I think that effort was a really good example of the uh, considerate and rigorous work that the uh, TUF community engages in. Um, we spent probably around 18 months from scratch to create a new architecture and implementation of that architecture uh, for TUF. Um, and why, why would we do that? Why would we throw away a bunch of code that had been uh, around for a long time? We, we had long had a sense that um, the code needed a major overhaul. Uh, the API had several functions which were triggering uh, like pilot warnings for the default number of arguments. Uh, the API was frankly very sprawling uh, and unnecessarily branchy with like lots of deep call stacks. Um, the repository library implementation we had required all of the metadata to be loaded to an in-memory database. So for large uh, repositories, um, this was a significant slow slowdown. We were prototyping PyPI integration and um, seeing like tens of minutes for operations to complete. 
Um, and then the decision to kind of sunset the legacy code was really um, <clears throat> reinforced when a security vulnerability was reported and it took us around three weeks, I think, to verify the issue and develop tests um, to have confidence in the fix that we had uh, created. So the, the thing we did is we, we moved kind of slowly and considerately and we really tried to make things better. Um, and we ended up with uh, a really nice architecture. Uh, there was a lot of contemplation and collaboration. There was some heavy lifting done, mostly by uh, Yussi, who's in the front here, and Lucas on stage with me. Uh, and we ended up with this um, design that instead of taking the specification and mapping that directly to code, they came up with these neat uh, abstractions. Um, so instead of just mapping pros to code, they had uh, modeled the uh, implicit abstractions in the code uh, as software um, classes, and um, they also did a bunch of, sort of old fashioned software engineering. So they modernized the code to use uh, modern Python with standard coding styles, standard test suites, uh, static typing, and this made the code much nicer to maintain and work with. Uh, and then there's some neat tricks in there, like the repository simulator, which enables much more dynamic testing. So we've moved away from having static test files living in the Git repository to some code that can simulate the different files. Um, and we've got this quite nice to use, uh, very ergonomic Pythonic API. And a bunch of the folks working on this wrote some blog posts about the details, and I can strongly recommend those for anyone who's remotely interested in, like, I always enjoy reading about good software engineering practices, and there's some good software engineering practices in those posts. And I can say that without too much um, <coughs> kind of bravado because I didn't write most of that code, so it's other people's work. Um, and then uh, we, we made this 1.0 release and we had this much leaner code base. We went from around 5,000 lines of code to um, less than 1,500 lines of code. And so that made us feel better. We could reason about things much more, but we, we were all aware of the fact that this was brand new code that we were asking people to trust for a security uh, project. And so the CNCF very generously funded um, a security audit through the Open Source Technology Improvement Fund, ELSTIF, um, which was executed by X41. And the results were really great, a, a significant confidence boost. Um, there were four issues you can see on the slide that were kind of deemed security relevant, and we quickly addressed those um, <clears throat> and kind of added uh, most significantly like a, a parameter to a, a shared library we use that restricts the permissions on the files on disk when, when they're written. Um, and yeah, this was like, we were elated with this basically. We were expecting some really negative results and, and uh, they couldn't find much. One of these issues I think is interesting because it's actually an issue in Python itself that they reported against our project. So uh, that's, uh, give us all a pat on the back I think. Um, and we're continuing to do development, taking a uh, similarly considerate and rigorous approach to our ongoing work, both in the library itself and um, using that library as a building block. I'm going to hand back to Lucas to talk about that some. Yeah, um, one of the key realizations during the redesign of the reference implementation was that it is uh, quite impossible to design a universal tough application and that's because Tough is a building block. Um, and when I say Tough is a building block, I don't mean the client. Um, the client has very clearly defined workflows in the specification, which look pretty much the same for any Tough setup, uh, modulo some minimal custom configuration. Um, so as a consequence of the shelf uh, client implementations as included in Python Tough and in other uh, Tough implementation can be used pretty much anywhere. Um, it's so easy to write a client that I'll show the snippet again that Joshua already showed. Um, yeah, those 20 um, codes, uh, lines of code do tough for you on the client side. Um, they work with any, any repository setup. Um, yeah, because the repository on the other hand uh, can vary a lot. Um, the specification doesn't really define one repository setup. Instead, it defines um, primitives, it defines roles responsible for different tasks and different content in a repository. It defines metadata formats um, that represent those roles. Um, and then it defines how roles delegate trust about content to each other, how they interrelate. 
um, and only a very minimal set of those roles is mandatory in any tough setup. But beyond that, there can be arbitrarily complex delegation trees uh, with many, many more roles. Um, and uh, TUF can also um, vary uh, a lot in regard to key requirements, availability of cryptographic keys. Uh, for instance, in, a, in an environment where content changes rarely and always in a very controlled manner, um, it might be reasonable to sign the content or the related metadata uh, with offline keys, uh, like cubic keys um, uh, plugged into your computer, even with a quorum of those. But this is definitely not feasible in a setup um, in a community repository like, like PyPI, where new content gets uploaded every couple of seconds by many, many different um, actors. And um, regardless, both of these setups can use TUF, can benefit from TUF, um, and, and its security properties to varying degrees. Um, so the nature of the specification that it provides these building blocks only on the repository si side makes it not trivial to implement uh, a generic repository application. And uh, at the same time, not providing a generic repository uh, application is not sustainable because adopters really need expert knowledge in order to adopt TUF in their setup. Um, also, the right setup um, definitely determines the security guarantees. So you can have a correct TUF setup, but still not uh, achieve all the security guarantees that you want. So there is definitely potential for human error. Um, and Acknowledging this fact that TUF is a building block allowed us to shift the mindset from um, to, to, to a kind of a application layering. So at the very bottom, we have this low level me metadata API um, that is, for instance, provided by Python TUF. Um, it still requires expert TUF knowledge to, um, to use it, to set up a right um, uh, Tough repository, but it like the the API makes makes it very um, ergonomic to do so. And then on top of that, we have um, a minimal repository abstraction, which is sort of the clue between the low level metadata API and an application. Um, its usage still requires um, expert knowledge to some extent, but it, it already encourages correct usage more and makes it even more ergonomic. And then on top of that, we, um, we, like the bottom two layers have made it easier to, to quickly write new applications that um, represent one specific use case of TUF, but are generic enough to be used by, by multiple adopters that then uh, don't, need, uh, don't need to adopt the TUF repository setup. Uh, by themselves, um, and Joshua will talk a little bit about some of those applications. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to talk about a few of the ways we've um, built on tough primitives and abstracted some of the repository designs we've seen in the wild to make it easier for folks to adopt tough without having to understand quite as much of tough as uh, they, they may have had to in the past. So the first one I want to talk about briefly is um, we have this project called Repository Service for Tough, And this started out uh, several years ago. It was proposed to integrate Tough into PyPI to uh, provide kind of repository signing. And this was um, went through a Python enhancement pro proposal process, PEP458. Um, and there was a flurry of work, and then it kind of faltered for various reasons. Uh, so after we had, uh, well, actually, the one of the motivating factors for our Python Tough rewrite was to support this uh, integration. So when that refactor was completed, uh, we began the work again in earnest. And one of the folks on the team, Cairo, uh, had implemented the changes and he had submitted a PR and we were really struggling to get any um, kind of review on it. And we were realizing as we we're looking at it that these are large and fairly invasive changes and they're really difficult to review without uh, the tough expertise and asking any kind of overworked open source maintainer to learn a complex system in order to review changes to their project is uh, 
I guess, fairly offensive. <laughs> so we, we had a challenge. How do we make these changes easier to um, adopt? And the design we came up with effectively abstracts over the complexities of the tough repository design, um, tries to simplify the integration, uh, and in, in this case through a REST API, and consolidates some of the operationalization best practices for managing uh, tough repositories at a large scale as would be required by PyPI. Uh, and so the result is this repository service for tough application, and this has sprung up in a relatively short amount of time and was recently contributed to the Open Source Security Foundation, or the uh, OpenSSF, uh, by VMware, and it's operating um, under the Securing Software Repositories Working Group, which brings together a lot of the people operating these repositories like PyPI, RubyGems, NPM, and so on. Um, so we're hoping to see uh, more interest from the working group members, and we have some future plans to implement uh, related tough repository styles to enable things like developer signing, so an arbitrary PyPI maintainer can kind of sign their package before they upload it, and uh, that makes it resilient to repository compromise as well as kind of on-path attackers. Um, and then another neat project is um, a little bit newer called Tough on CI, and this has its um, origin story in the Six Star project. So if no one, if you haven't heard of the Six Star project, Six Star is a relatively new, it's about one year old, I think, effort to um, make it much easier for developers to do kind of software signing. Uh, and it uses existing identities like your uh, email account or your GitHub account or whatever, um, and it issues short-lived certificates. Uh, and it's a fairly complex, as you can see from the diagram, like software system, and at the root of some of these services are these keys, um, which all of the clients need a copy of in order to verify like the chain of uh, security claims in a six source system. Um, and of course, any client with a copy of these keys need to know that they've got the latest copy of the keys and that the keys are uh, not tampered with and that they have a consistent ring of keys, which all starts to sound like some of the properties that Tuff provides. Uh, and the folks working on SIGSOR made that connection, and they, they started coming up with this uh, neat orchestration mechanism using GitHub Actions so that they could have people contributing to the SIGSOR project from around the world all do uh, the kind of quorum or threshold signing that Tuff supports through GitHub uh, pull requests uh, and automation through GitHub Actions. And this is really neat, um, but it's... Uh, also very hard-coded for the situation, and it turns out that people want to do things like privately deploy SIGSTOR to their corporations, and trying to replicate that setup uh, for their own use is tricky. Um, and so uh, you see, who's it here in the front, realize that um, this could be generalized much more um, and implemented in a much more templated way so that it could be used by other projects of different kinds and other instances of SIGSTOR. Uh, and he started this Tough on CI project to provide the, the root signing mechanism of SIGSTOR um, for more general use cases. Um, and yeah, that's another a neat instance of a Tough application. These two systems are very different in how they apply Tough with the number of um, things they're trying to sign and the number of people doing the signing operations, uh, which exemplifies the, um, the versatile nature of the Tough specification. So having some high quality first party implementations of Tough repository models is uh, really helping the project understand um, and the users of the project understand where this thing can be used and how it can be put to use. Okay, and, and back to Lucas to uh, conclude, I guess. Yeah, this concludes our talk pretty much. Uh, to recap, we heard about uh, tough providing building blocks for securing the last mile of the software supply chain today um, and what maintaining tough involves it's a combination of security engineering collaboration project management technical writing software engineering all sorts of skills are required um, and are appreciated if uh, donated to our group <laughs> um, yeah the tough community is small but very passionate very engaged and definitely welcoming and um, I can say from my own experience that it's very rewarding working on those projects with um, very skilled people um, I have learned a lot I've learned a lot there and um, yeah I hope to to see more people we have a couple of coordinates here on the slide um, 
most activity happens on GitHub under the Update Framework umbrella. Um, we have a homepage, the Update Framework IO, where you'll find more information about the whole project. Um, communication mostly happens on our CNCF Slack channel, um, hash tough. And we have a fairly low, low volume email address where we also announce our monthly community meetings. Um, yeah, this, uh, we haven't uploaded the slides yet, but they will be available later. Um, so yeah, hope to see you somewhere on these platforms or in our next community meeting. Thank you. If you do have any questions, we've got like four minutes. Uh, yeah, and we will also hang, hang yeah. out here a little bit, so maybe we have more than four minutes. Thanks. Maybe I'll ask you a question then. Is anyone hearing about Tough for the first time today? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, so the first uh, user of our stuff was effectively integrating it into their CI CD pipeline um, to make sure that the artifacts they were producing through that process uh, were kind of securely delivered to their uh, orchestration system. Um, pulling, when you're pulling in a bunch of the internet as well, uh, it does get a little bit more complicated, but you could certainly, um, you could use uh, like our stuff to effectively, uh, once you've pulled the thing in, uh, you have the, um, you get the protection that the thing isn't tampered with uh, internally or in transit from your, an internal mirror effectively. Um, Absolutely, yeah. You want to have it there, you want to have it signed at the most bandwidth rate because yeah, you want to not download half the internet to my own mirror. Sure, I, I mean, the, there's, there's trade-offs there, um, but this is one of the reasons why we contributed this project yeah. to the OpenSSF, and we are talking to the folks that, so the, some of the people working on Maven, uh, like folks from Sonatype who uh, work on Maven Central, they are a part of this securing software repositories working group that is sponsoring this project at the OpenSSF. Um, and that's certainly like our goal is to have groups like that either adopt this software or, you know, an implementation of it. If, you know, some people are quite um, particular about, I don't want to take a Python dependency for my Java ecosystem, for example. So, but there, we hope this project is very well documented and we hope that we have both an implementation that folks can use but also kind of an architecture that folks can replicate if they don't want to take the software verbatim. Um, so it's it's our goal to get this integrated into repositories like that. Um, cool. Well, um, yeah, we'll hang around. If anyone does want to ask a question without the microphones, uh, we'll, we'll be just out there. But otherwise, yeah, thanks for attending.